Welcome to Paper Fire Studio, uh, coming to you from Austin, Texas. I am excited today to, to show you kind of something new and a little different. But first I need to explain why I'm wearing these gloves. Yes, I know it's a little bizarre. No, it's not because of the pandemic. Um, I did get my acrylic nails taken off to let my cuticle, I do this about once a year or so, to let my cuticles breathe and my nail guy recommends that I do that. So I did it. And of course, when you do that, your nails underneath look horrible. So I just couldn't put you all through that. <laughs> so I know these look weird, but not as bad as my actual nails. So hopefully the next time I see you on video, I will have my new nails all back on and everything will be pretty again. But for now, it's blue latex gloves. So, sorry about that. Um, I am using this to prop up what I'm going to show you, although this is a little slice of pretty, isn't it? I got this at a garage sale years ago and I use it to keep my snippets in. You know, if you're going to keep something in something, why don't we have it look pretty? Yeah, this whoever did this just piled up lace and did a beautiful topper on it. And I have my pretty snippets jar. So what are we going to be talking about today? You know, I, as a crafter and a maker, and if you're like me, when you keep making the same thing over and over again, sometimes as a crafter, I get a little bored. And so I always look at things and how can you change it up? How can you do it a little bit different? I love um, looking at tutorials of the makers out there that have the courage to really do something different. I, I really enjoy that. And so I don't know if this idea is out there. I, I don't know. However, I looked at my journals and I've decided I could do them a little different. And it turned out so fun that I want to make more of them like this. And I want to see if you agree. Just a different way to do our junk journals. And here it is. What if we did a journal that didn't bind on the side? but bound at the top. This is a pamphlet stitch up at the top of this journal. Now, like I said, I, I don't know if this has been done before. I, I don't know whether I dreamt it. <laughs> I don't know. But I just was looking at how else could we do a journal? Well, it turned out so fun. I love it. And I wanted to share it with you. Um, this really isn't a tutorial per se, although I do have a piece of this to show you that I learned when I did this to help you if you decide that you want to make one. And I guess if you want me to do a tutorial on this, I can, but it, it is pretty self-explanatory, but let, let's get into it. And let me, let me show you what I did. Uh, the papers on here that I use for the cover is one of my favorites, 49th and Market Vintage Remnants. And the reason I like that paper, it is so thick. It, it is a heavy duty cardstock paper. It comes, you know, in packs, 12 by 12, um, Vintage Remnants is the name of it. So I did that for the cover. I stitched around. You can kind of see here that I've stitched around. And 
I tied it at the top with some tassels. Now, I didn't make those, I didn't like glue them down or I just let them kind of free, free hang here in case you wanted to undo that bow and put something else in there. It's, it's totally, whoever goes home with this has a couple of options here on some design elements for this journal. I really couldn't, I couldn't decide. So I thought, well, I'll just let them figure it out. Um, I have my um, ephemera piece and I, I have that in a video that I showed uh, about a month ago. These are those ephemera pieces with the tracing paper and the embossed um, paper on top with the lace. I have a bunch of those that I made, so I decided to use one for the cover and did a really pretty picture. That picture is from Ruby and Pearl. I love their, their pictures of women. Oh, they're beautiful. Little bit uh, Tim Holtz die cut here uh, for the wildflowers. Did a photo circle and this is the paper as you see it's inside so i decided to bring it out to the cover so as we flip through this you'll see that paper is used throughout and that paper is my porch prints um, woodland romance is who that is so this has a little bit of a vintage shabby feel with some botanicals in it. So um, you'll see that here in a minute. Oh, I did a Tim Holtz um, wood, you know, a, a, I guess they're just words that are on the thick cardstock, cardboard, to make that kind of stand out. So let's open it up and I get, oh, one more thing, one more thing. I put this eyelet here with all intention of putting sari silk through it and, and wrapping it around this, but I, duh, I don't want to cover the picture. I, I didn't like it. I left it. So if you wanted to add sari silk to it, or you wanted to put maybe some brown twine in there to circle around this journal to keep it closed, it, because of the weight of it coming down, it's, you know, it's not going to open. So I just left it. I'm going to let the owner decide what they want to do. Added some fun lace here at the bottom. So here we go. It opens like this. Now I'm going to have to be, keep sliding it up and down here so you can get a feel for what I've done on the top page I did um, one of my collage uh, master boards I've cut up put some doilies on the top I believe those are Roxy creation doilies and this is my from my master board um, a, a little tuck on the side there so and again you could write on the back this really is designed um, as all my journals are, that I hope that the owner of this will, and again, the theme is to be authentic, that this is a journal for a woman to write in so that she can maybe eventually hand it down to a family member and they learn from her, they learn about her. And so I got a, quite a few pages to write in, but you know, just some quotes here as well. And of course, we just have to have pretty pages. Got to have that. So another Ruby and Pearl picture. Um, this is part of the ephemera pack from the Woodland Romance. This is a book page um, that I've used and you'll see those throughout. Second page is one of my cabinet cards that I I made and this is against a book page now you'll notice that that book page is upside down because of the way it goes in the journal but I loved it anyway I I just love the uniqueness of that as you look at it and you still have this beautiful scenery next to the cabinet card 
Here's a doily that I put in and ended up gluing it down to this paper. Some real pretty French paper to write on. Next page is a little collage there with a tag that pulls out. And I added, I think, three or four pages of uh, coffee dyed paper. There's 10 pages that are um, pamphlet stitched in, so 20, 20 sides here. So here's your, the with the tag and the collage on a playing card to hold it in. But here's our next page. This was an envelope. It's got one pocket here that you could slide in and maybe put a photograph here if you want. And again, you could write on the back. And then another one of my collaged tags there from the master board. This was made on ledger paper and it's vintage water paper, or, uh, excuse me, ledger paper from Quakertown, Pennsylvania. It's real pretty. All right. And here's the next page. This is one of my favorites. This is a, a wood background that came from my porch prints and I did the belly band on it. And that belly band is um, again from my master boards that I made and cut it up, stitched around it. But here is this really unique piece of ephemera. And it's got a Tim Holtz metal um, sundial on it. And it opens like this. So once I open it here, you'll see this is an envelope. And the sides were trimmed off to create this flap. And it comes over. I've done some stamping on it on some coffee stained paper. Oh, I love that. And it holds your pieces of effect inside here. So I've just gotten some coffee dyed ephemera in here. All right, well, I can get it back in here. All right, and that slides back in the belly band and it holds on with that screw. There go. And the next page is really pretty. It's an envelope from the Woodland Romance. This beautiful butterfly on it. And again, did some pages on here for writing. And that envelope wraps around to this side. Look at that butterfly. Is that not gorgeous? <laughs> yeah, I did a little sorry silk on the on the paper clip there. Then I um, I just threw in eco dyed papers. I believe this one's from Nick the Booksmith. Um, just because the colors, the the kind of golden yellow tones, really, I think accented the next page here. And that's just a pretty page. You can put a photo on that. Whatever you want to do. Then we come to a book page pocket. I put lace at the edge of it. And again, another one of those tags. Now, um, you'll notice that the tags have no toppers on them. And I decided, again, you've got to watch out for the thickness of this journal. So I didn't want any extra thickness coming in on the toppers. So I just left all the tags topperless. <laughs> Topless? I don't know. Don't want to say that. All right, and the next page is a, a right side belly band with a journal card again in here on the coffee dyed paper. Next page is a little pouch that I made with that holds an inventory tag with some sorry silk, little fun decoration there. That goes down to the next page, which is a vellum pocket. And again, the reason I did vellum is this beautiful tag that I made out of a book page. I didn't want to cover it up. So I slid it into the vellum pocket so you could enjoy the pretty color. And here's the middle. 
of our journal. So these are the pages from Woodland Romance that I did for the inside so for some nice journaling there. Another pretty page out of a book, botanical book, included that. And then it moves us to a lace pocket. Did some lace here with another journal tag from my master board. And then this was another master board that I did. And again, places for them to journal. And this is on uh, backed with an order blank um, from 1903. It's a piece of ephemera there that's just beautiful. So those slide in there like that. All right, next page is a book page pocket. I did some Tim Holtz um, paper trim with those die cuts there. Included a piece of ephemera that says spring flowers on it. Then we get to a paper clip here that holds the little file folder shut. These were already pre-done. I think Seven Gypsies did these. Um, did put a sticker on there and a little piece of ephemera with the labels hanging down. So you can kind of see that lace at the top. And again, that just slides in there. Another pretty page. Again, I just love this tree. Next to the eco print. Did a belly band here with a sticker in the center and just included a little with vintage old student writing paper. Oh, this paper feels so wonderful. But again, it's um it is vintage with the rice paper cover. All right. And we get to a page of coffee dyed paper here for, again, picture, whatever you want to add there. And then I did some a smaller sheet, a smaller ledger sheet here. And one another one of those pictures from Pearl and Ruby. I put a little tag on this so it would flip up so they would know what to do with this page. Go ahead and flip it up and you can write on there. And that leads me to the next page, which is again um, a video that I did on ephemera, making ephemera out of old receipts. And so this page I made as a flip up here. I put a hinge on this. So again, if they have something, you know, maybe a little more private that they don't want people to see, they can have it fit down under that receipt. It's an old, old French receipt. And here's where the other side of that doily comes in. And I left it, I left it loose this time. They might want to glue it down to that side if you want. Tim Holtz trim. Another one of those beautiful pictures, you can see there, that I've just attached. It says, be original. I've just attached it with the paper clip, and it's got a space for writing. And to the last page, this was fun. This is an envelope by My Porch Prints, and again, it's just beautiful. And this is the book page that you can see here because of the way the pages flip, it's going to be upside down. Well, it really, no one will notice because you've got this envelope that comes over the top and it looks great amongst that greenery. It really looks great. And then the last page is an embossed envelope, uh, or I guess a tuck spot there, not really an envelope. And it houses three more pieces of ephemera. Again, this was one from the master boards that I made, and two other pieces. 
And that is the end of the journal. So this journal, this particular journal, let me, is six inches wide by about nine. It's about nine inches. So here's a couple of things I learned about making this journal. And again, depending on what size you make it, if you want a nine by six and you like this size of a journal, if you think about folding your pages in half and they're nine inches long, that's going to be 18 inches. Okay. Well, our 12 by 12s, that's not going to be long enough. So what you're going to have to do with this journal is you're going to have to make some pages. Now, um, the way, and I wanted to just, let me just show you real quick. I cut a couple of pieces to just kind of give you an idea for the pages. All right, this was just a ledger piece. And you can see it's it was this wide. All right, so I cut it to six inches wide because that's the width that's the width of my papers. So I cut them six inches wide. Let me get rid of these. All right, so here's how I designed the pages in here so that they would be long enough. I cut one of the pages to nine inches because nine inches is the height of the pages. So let me, I've made my little mark here. Let me just cut that. Oh my gosh, I got my, <laughs> I've never crafted in gloves before. So this is really weird. All right, so here's the length of the page. Now, you need another page that you're going to glue to that one and it's going to be eight and a half, which let me take that back. The pages here are actually eight and a half and you can see here that one's kind of pulled down a little bit, but it's eight and a half by six. So here's what I did to make the pages long enough. I just, you can see here, I've added a half inch on. I'm going to score it and just fold it. So now you're going to basically be building your pages. Again, this didn't score very well, but so your eight and a half will fit right in here. Again, I can trim that off a little bit. And now you have your two sides that are eight and a half by eight and a half. And those are what you're going to bind in to your journal. And you do 10 pages like that. So this is how to build the page with a half inch scored little binding there. You put the eight and a half on top of it and you can glue it. And you can see here that that's why I did the Tim Holtz lace binding, you know, that little lace die cut over where it shows that seam because you'll get a seam that shows like this. Oh, sorry, I'm out of camera. It shows like this in your journal. Well, if you want to cover it up and put some uh, a trim there or any binding um, little die cut that you've got, stick it on there so no one will ever see it. So that is how, and you could see here, here's another seam that I did. 
right here where I joined two pages together and it makes it so you don't have to worry about having pages long enough just build your pages just build them you could use book pages 12 by 12 coffee dyed whatever and go at it and have fun so I'm excited for my new journal and I guess I need to figure out the name of it maybe you can help me with that in comments is it a top flipping journal I don't know I don't know I'll have to come up with something cute but anyway I hope you enjoyed this and again I will be popping it into my Etsy shop but I'm ready to make about three more of them because I, they're so much fun and again it just gives you a break in doing something a little bit different okay coming to you from the farm at austin texas it is paper fire studio i'm eloise thanks for joining me today bye bye